Hey guys, welcome out to the shop today. We have a project for our golf cart that we're gonna be working on. We already have a USB plug on our golf cart, but we want to add one that has a voltmeter. And we gotta figure out where we need to put it and how we gotta wire it up so that it's only on with the ignition because it actually has a readout on it. So if we leave it to a tight end source, then the battery will drain from the little digital display on it. It's not a lot, but if you guys have ever had a car that's had dead battery and it's because of a tail light or an interior light of a car being left on, it can drain a battery quickly. So what we need to do is figure out the wiring that we need to go ahead and go with so that when the key is turned on, it actually will like triggers the voltmeter reading and the USB ports. We also have a mirror that we have to put on the golf cart as well. So let's go out and step out and see the uh, golf cart, see what we got to do to it. So here is our golf cart. This is our green golf cart. We love this thing. We call it our Reptar golf cart. And if any of you guys from the 90s, you will recognize that symbol right there. That's from the Rugrats. And of course it means Riptar. So what we have today, what we're gonna be messing with is this right here. This is a voltmeter and two USB ports. One is greater than the other, but when you have this all closed up, it will give a readout for how many volts your battery has. And what we currently have on here is this USB right here. This is a single, so what we want to do is replace this with the other one. We want to wire it so that when the ignition is turned on, then it powers this up so you can see how much battery life this golf cart has. And when we turn it off, it's not going to drain anything. So what we need to first do is take off this little panel right here. And for that, we simply need a Torx screwdriver. I don't think there's anything on the back now. It just screws in. So we'll take that off right there. Put these in the little holder. Keys out of the way as well. And then So we should be able to pull this whole panel off now. Oh, it's got one right here as well. Small Torx bit. There we go. All right, so this is a very basic setup. So you have your green and blue wires going to your ignition. They travel right in this little pack. All right, so after digging in here, using my meter, trying to figure out where I could get power from when the ignition was turned on and off, I saw a couple extra cables up underneath the dash and I started digging through them and I actually found one that was labeled for a 12 volt system and then I found one that was for a horn button so I have these couple extra ones that are labeled for different things so I tested out this one right here that is for the 12 volts and I actually am getting a reading on the, on the uh, USB ports whenever the switch is on. And when I turn the switch off, this actually goes off. So what I have to do now is um, hook into this section right here and I can simply remove this out of here. We'll get some longer wires to move this to a different spot. So this is gonna go a lot easier than I had originally thought. So first things first, I need to go through my stuff and see if I have any clips that will actually fit in there. If you guys remember, I went to that 
estate sale and scored all that electrical stuff, which that will come in handy now. Oh look, my drill press is gone as well. So we're gonna dig through this and see if there's anything that will actually clip in there. I believe that is what I need in there, I think. So let's get these pulled out real quick and test them and see if they'll actually fit. And just to kind of give you guys an actual visual of this having the 12 volts, we'll put it on the meter real quick so you guys can see. So that is nothing. And then you guys can see that has 11 points. 9 volts. Let me zoom in real quick. So there's 11.9. And then as soon as I turn the key off, it will lose its power. And eventually it will go down to zero. Alright, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just going to clip these ends off of here. Why don't you just pull them off? Because they don't just pull off. <laughs> Comments from the peanut gallery. Then we will strip them. So on these wirings, we have this part that says it's the 12 volts to the terminal. And then this one says the 12 volt negative lead to outside terminal. So the blue is the positive, And then the black is obviously going to go with the black with the negative. And we'll just hook these in here. So we got that plugged in and we'll give this a quick test so you guys can see so we have 11.8 or 11.9 volts which is what the meter said as well and if we turn this off it goes 11 and 0 and then it goes off So we need to, we'll just clip those off. Right on the end. Oh, that's going to be tight. a lot quicker than doing it with a file now let's go back to the cart all right so we've got the piece in on the dash so we'll go ahead and put the nut back on there let's get this threaded back down we gotta hook all this other stuff up again real quick i moved all these wires out of the way so that i want to hit them and we'll have to adjust this once we get it on not a hundred percent sure on which direction this needs to be you guys probably know more than me but i think maybe we can spin this around and i think that this needs to go up so it should sit 
like that. What do you guys think? You think that's going to be right? You think I can get it on my first shot? Let's go ahead and tighten this up. All right, now we'll hook it all back together and see if see if that's correct. Let's put all this back together real quick before I forget it. Double to single. And then orange to orange. And brown to brown. All right, now we should be able to put the key in and get a reading. There we go. So as you can see, I have it correct. Let me zoom in here. Let me get you guys so you can see it. So this has 11.9 on it. It's reading correct. And I turn the key off. And it should drain down. So now let me go get a cable real quick and make sure that the USB ports work as well. So now, now that I've cleared everything away, you can see that I do have power on the USB ports as well, which is awesome. So this works. Everything is working like it's supposed to. We have the voltmeter and USB ports already installed. We're gonna go ahead and start working on this mirror. And it came in a box with just this bit of hardware right here, some knobs, and then a couple brackets with screws. Some of them are self-tapping. And then with simple instructions, but the instructions make it so you can mount it into a car, and that's not what we wanna do. So I have to kind of figure out where I need to mount this to to actually make this work. So we're gonna go ahead and look out at the cart and see what'll work. All right, so the simplest way I am finding to get this up here mounted so that I can actually mark the holes is by using some zip ties. And I'll be able to zip tie it fairly tight and get at least one of the holes drilled So that's not too bad, not at all. So now I've got it up there. It looks even right where I want it to be. This side can probably go up a little bit higher. So instead of trying to drill a hole, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark them. That seems like it might be a little bit simpler and then we can go ahead and get that attached. So thanks guys for joining me today on these two upgrades, the voltmeter and this five piece mirror. They're both gonna come in handy when we're out traveling around with the golf cart, when we take it camping and stuff like that, because now we can actually see what's behind us and also know if we're running low on our battery. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button, leave comments down below or suggestions or better tips to mount these kind of things. And as always, thanks for joining me and we will see you guys next week.